I watched all 17 official Overwatch animated shorts, and today I'll be ranking them from best to worst. And I must say, Overwatch is known for their great animated shorts, and it's pretty much all of these are really good. But you'll want to watch till the end, because some are truly incredible. Let's get into it. Starting us off, we have Soldier's Hero Cinematic, and even though it's at the bottom of this list, this one still isn't bad. We have a girl Alejandra, who effectively gets robbed by some thugs on Dorado, and then Jack Morrison, aka Soldier76, comes to the rescue. I mean, it's fine, but nothing really significant happens, and the action is a bit boring. Soldier also basically just shrugs off being a hero. You're one of those heroes, aren't you? Not anymore. Which, although understandable based on the story, feels a little disappointing. As a result, it ends up in 17th place. Next up is Maze Rise and Shine. This one is down here as it just feels way too long. It's actually the longest of all standard animated shorts at a huge 10 minutes in length, yet it's also one of the least impactful. This one features no action at all, which although not always a bad thing, it absolutely is here. That's due to it also lacking any significance to the story other than showing May's origin, combined with the absence of emotionally evoking scenes or quotes. I mean, it tries when so Snowball sacrifices itself to power Mate's blaster, but it's a robot which just gets powered back up later, so it doesn't have that same impact. Honestly, this cinematic is carried by Winston's intro recall speech, which is a separate cinematic I'll be covering later. That's why it ends up at 16th. Surgeon's Calling is at 15th, and this one is also just kinda meh. I don't even have anything special to say about this one, it just exists, and it's alright, but it's nothing compared to some of the better shorts they've made. I feel like Sojin is simply a bit too bland of a character. After I'd begun the production of this video, Malga's A Great Day was just released, so sorry if it feels like I'm shoehorning it in here. Anyways, let's talk about it. This cinematic was actually quite interesting, showing us a Talon mission targeting a North Sector ship. Initially, Sombra and Rupert believed to have failed due to Malga's recklessness and overly really light-hearted attitude. However, it's unveiled that he's actually a lot smarter than he looks, as Malga always has a plan in mind. In the end, the mission is actually more successful than it would have been without him. Overall, this is a decent one, and acts as a good introduction to Malga, but not much more than that. The production quality seems lower than for most other animations, which can be fine, but the light-hearted atmosphere also prevents any sort of emotional impact, and you'll notice that I mentioned that quite a lot with these. It isn't bad, but there is simply so much better. Past the worst three, and I would say Alive at 14th is a decent step up. It depicts a battle between Tracer and Widow, which ultimately ends in the devastating death of Mondata, an omnic monk who taught Zenyatta and Ramatra. In contrast to some of the ones we just covered, this animated short is filled with action, but that isn't always a good thing. Of course, it is called Series 2 Fighters Styles, but even though a pretty significant character dies, it feels like it just lacks emotion and is rather a showcase for each of the Widows and Tracer's abilities. Dragons, meanwhile, which is in many ways similar, is way more successful at conveying that emotion through better dialogue and storytelling, but Alive just can't quite do that. Recall is next, which combines a Winston origin story, Reaper attacking Watchpoint Gibraltar, and then the decision to, well, recall Overwatch. Although the battle is definitely worse than that in Alive, the other parts do help it out, especially the flashbacks, as it's able to claim 13 thanks to this one quote. Always remember. Never accept the world as it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. As 12th, we have Are You With Us, the old Overwatch 1 intro, which is Winston's actual Overwatch recall message. I love this as it brings back so many good memories and it's able to have such a large emotional impact in such a short time. The music is also fire, and although it may be partly nostalgia talking, I did actually consider placing it higher. However, I felt that doing so would be a disservice for fully fledged cinematics coming up next, plus they are also really good, so I decided against it. Still, this one could absolutely be placed higher or lower depending on how you rank these, so I thought this was a reasonable spot for it to be. Reunion is why I placed it 11th, and now we're starting to get to the good ones. Here we see a duel between McCassidy and Ash's crew, and it's pretty epic. My general summary of it would be Cash just being too good, and then explosion. At the end, we even get the reveal of Echo long before she ever became a hero. Overall, I do like it, but there are some really better cinematics above it on this list. Surprising, I know. Almost like that's the whole point of this list. Moving on, we have the absolutely named Overwatch cinematic trailer. That's because this is the first ever cinematic that Blizzard released for this game, over 9 years ago. That just feels insane. Anyways, this trailer simply set a great standard for all future cinematics. In all fairness, it isn't anything too special, but it doesn't have to be. Plus, you know, 
The world could always use more heroes. After that, I have Infiltration, where we are shown a talent assassination mission which Sombra takes over in order to blackmail Katya Volskaya, the most powerful woman in Russia. Now, although this cinematic was basically just used as an intro to Sombra, it actually does it pretty well. The combination of stealth, wit, and ulterior motives for joining talent do make Sombra a very interesting character, as seen here. Combine that with some solid action, and overall, it deserves its ranking of 9th. The last Bastion is next, and this one actually has no dialogue. Yeah, it managed to climb all the way to 8th without a single word being spoken. It instead uses visual storytelling to depict a bastion awakening from its slumber, battling with its programming, but then eventually becoming peaceful thanks to Ganymede. Some may find it a bit boring as it mostly lacks action, and to be fair, I used to, but it really has grown on me as I begin to realise more of the value that different aspects of it can offer. Wastelander, effectively a Jungle Queen origin story, is at 7. Now we're getting towards the really good ones. This cinematic is full of great action whilst also showing off JQ's exciting personality. The addition of her acting as a narrator to her own story is also a nice twist, which makes her and this cinematic stand out from the rest. Even though there are a few better ones, Wastelander's masterful combination of character building and action earns it this spot. Just missing out on the top 5 is Diva's Shooting Star, and to be fair I don't have too much to say about this one. It has quite a few things similarly to Wastelander, but with a less witty and more serious and heroic tone, as well as even including some character development with its short 7 minutes. I really do like this one, but it simply couldn't surpass the remaining 5 in my opinion. Before we move on to the top 5, I'd seriously appreciate it if you could blow up that like button, and comment down below what your top 5 cinematics are. Zero Hour, what I consider to be the Overwatch 2 cinematic trailer, makes it into the top 5. This one's great, just straight up. From the audio to the visuals to the story, it doesn't disappoint. I still get chills when Genji jumps out to deflect the blast from a huge null sector boss. Even though the actual release of Overwatch 2 was all but great, I'm all for the cinematic, and the reunion of the Overwatch crew was just so epic. Still, there are four more which I believe to be better, the first of which is... Kiriko's cinematic makes it to fourth, aptly named Kiriko. How creative. Aside from that though, this one is great, showing Kiriko's mother-daughter relationship whilst also having an insane fight scene. We get to see her childish and playful side, and then are quickly shown just how menacing she can seem. The visuals in this one were also stunning, and the moments where Kiri used her ult was just too cold, especially when a little kid starts running up the screen with an axe. Into the top 3 and we have dragons. I know this is easily in many people's top 2, and it technically is for me as well, but I'll get onto why later. Either way, it's spectacular. Effectively telling two versions of the same story at once, Dragon shows us the reuniting of Hanzo and Genji, after Hanzo believed that he had killed his brother. Not only does this one feature some emotionally powerful themes like grief, humility, and brotherhood, but also without a doubt the most epic fight scene in any of these cinematics. The use of a narrator to simultaneously tell a slightly different story is a nice addition as well, and overall this one simply takes all the boxes. I suspect you've probably already watched it considering that it has 43 million views, but if for whatever reason you haven't, do it. You won't regret it. And in our number 2 position is Honor and Glory. This cinematic is just too good. The emotional impact is simply insane, with lines like Die this glory, old friend. And I have been called. I must answer. Always. What's not to like? This right here is the power of good writing, because emotion is the most memorable thing a cinematic can offer. Obviously that can be achieved in different ways, but to varying levels of success. Meanwhile, this one does it perfectly. Ryan becomes an incredible character from the power of this one cinematic alone, something which many others fail to achieve for their respective characters. I don't know how much more to say about Honor and Glory at this point, it's just too good. However, in first place is Genesis. Okay, maybe this isn't quite fair, so feel free to discount this pick and move all previous cinematics up a position if you want. The fact that this one is technically three separate parts is kind of cheating from the start, I will admit, but at the same time it's what makes it so great. Genesis basically tells us the entire original Overwatch story before they were disbanded, focusing on the Omnic War. Obviously it doesn't have that same kind of emotional impact as Dragons or Honor and Glory, but that additional length gives it the time to offer more than that, to offer more of a complete story. It gives us somewhat of a look into what a potential Overwatch animated TV series could look like, and does the telling of an Overwatch backstory justice. I thought for a long time on where to place this one and whether to disqualify it entirely, but eventually decided this, this was the fairest placement I could make. So, that was my ranking of all Overwatch cinematics, and hopefully they continue to release more great animations like these. But what do you think? Which one is your favourite? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you 
next time.